Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320, and this week's project is an end table. It is a smaller piece, which I chose on purpose. I picked it up this morning for $8.99 at our local thrift store, and I think it's just the perfect project. I don't have a lot of time this week, so I wanted to be sure to pick out something small so I could get a video out to you. So stick around. of symbolic that I put that in there because my orbital sander actually did die on this project and thankfully I also have a Ryobi orbital sander that my husband gave me for Christmas. It was a good thing I had more than one. I knew I wanted to take the feet off and you might be cringing thinking oh come on they're cool but I didn't want them on this piece. This piece was very stylized and it was really interfering with my ability to think outside the box, trying to get creative. And I wanted to take off at least some of the decorative pieces so I could kind of invent my own thing. And it was easy enough to do, as you can see. However, I did save the legs because you never know, they are cool and I may want them for another project. Before you start taking apart anything, make sure that it isn't essential to the structure of the whole piece of furniture. You have to be sure that you're taking off just that part that you want to take off and not something structural. Now that I've removed the decorative pieces and the feet, I can go back with my chisel and take off as much glue as possible. And I mean as much as I can possibly get off because otherwise I'm going to tear up my sandpaper on my orbital sander. I had one troublesome spot on the top and I sanded and sanded and it looks pretty good there but I will show you in a little while a little bit more about that. At this point in the project, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I was probably going to paint most of it. I usually show some woods, but the part I wanted to paint, I just didn't know what I wanted to paint or how. I didn't want to just paint it. I wanted to do something a little different. I had forgotten I got this stencil. I got it a little while ago and I finally got a chance to try it out. Now my suggestion to you is when you're putting on a stencil, 
move it around a little bit. Now this one's really big, so obviously I'm not gonna be able to put the whole thing on the drawers, but by moving it around, you get a sense of what you want for your design. Now I'm using two colors, one by Melange, it's tobacco brown, and the other by Fusion Mineral Paint, and it's cranberry. I've never used cranberry. I've used the tobacco brown a lot, and I love that color. It's weird, it's a weird color, but I wanted these two together. They were very fall color-ish, and I just kind of started to do it. Now, I mixed the two together. I didn't mix them a lot. I just blended them, so it was, it wasn't mixed completely, but it does look like it's mixed here. One thing about stencils that I will share with you that I've learned, the paint that you put on your roller, because I use a roller, you can use whatever you want, but I have found the roller to be the most consistent. You don't use a lot of paint. If you use a lot of paint, it's going to bleed through and you will have a really messy looking design. So just go slow and that way you'll have more control. I had some trouble sanding off some spots on the top, so I used some citrus strip stripper to try and help me get those few spots off. I had to move into the garage because of the rain. I'm using mineral spirits after taking off the stripper. You always wanna do that to neutralize anything that might be left behind. Otherwise you're gonna have trouble when you're painting or staining. I decided to use just a neutral or natural color stain, which means it just brings out the natural color of the wood on the drawers and on the top. I'm using a wire brush here after putting more citrus strip on the top, vacuuming in, in between because a lot of stuff was coming up, but in the end, it really never did completely come off. But you'll see, it looks okay. I'm almost ready to paint, but before I do, I'm gonna use a tack cloth or a microfiber cloth to get off all of that dirt. When I started, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I just started to paint. I started with the tobacco brown, and then I went to the cranberry, and as you can see, the cranberry is super bright, and wasn't sure that I liked the way it looked. So what I did was I took some of the tobacco brown, because I had already done this with the stencil, I put the tobacco brown on top of the cranberry to tone it down a bit, but I didn't want to do it completely. I wanted some of that cranberry to show through, obviously. I also wanted to put the cranberry on top of the tobacco brown because that was gonna give a little bit of a different color. So I had two different things going on and everything in between. And I thought it looked pretty good. The trick to blending is to relax, not worry about being perfect because that's not the goal, but you just kind of have to feel it. So you maybe want to practice and just get an old piece and try it, but you're not trying to blend the two colors together completely. You want a variety of those two colors. And if you try it, you'll start to understand what I mean. So instead of just whizzing through this and showing you that I painted the piece, I'm actually gonna show you a lot of how I blended the paint. Not completely, but you'll get a pretty good idea of what I'm doing.
As I said before, blending is really about feeling. You just kind of have to start and go with it. Don't panic if something doesn't look quite right because you can always go back and go over it. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush when you're blending. I actually use both brushes and they both have a little bit of each color. But if you're very careful, you're not gonna get that paint in the jars of paint that you have. But I suggest maybe getting a couple different containers to put your paint in so that you don't contaminate the original color. If you paint enough with a lot of different colors, you will recognize that reds, dark greens, dark, dark blues, they're highly, highly concentrated pigments, but they are also strangely transparent. So it's good to know that going in so that you don't get frustrated. The more you paint with them, the more you'll understand that. The legs came in the mail, and now I'm going to put them on. These legs I use a lot because they are very versatile. And to be honest with you, I wasn't quite sure how they were gonna work on this particular piece because it's so stylized. And I was pleasantly surprised. Where you position your legs is really more about where there aren't holes or where there are holes that will work. But you need to make sure that wherever you put them, they're the same on all four corners. I'm sanding the top one more time, wiping it off with the tack cloth. And now I'm going to stencil the top. And this particular top is big enough to fit my entire stencil. If you need to measure, go ahead. But I hardly ever do. I just eyeball it. But you have to be comfortable with whatever you decide to do. Now you can see that I'm using, again, the same colors, but I'm putting little dots of the paint, both colors, not together, but in the same space and then rolling my roller over it, but it's not a lot of paint. You want it to be tacky and you don't want a lot of paint on your roller or it's going to ooze out underneath your stencil and it's gonna look horrible. The good news is if that happens, you can just sand it off and do it again. I didn't have to do that. It worked out really nicely and I am so happy with that stencil. It looks really great. I'm trying to be careful as I put this natural stain on because it hasn't been very long since the paint dried, but it worked. <laughs> I like to live on the edge. The only thing left to do is add the hardware. So these were a day late which really threw my schedule off. And they finally came today, and they're not big enough. <laughs> they won't work. So I had to search in my stock, <laughs> and I just spray painted these. It's not what I want, but it will do for now. And Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to take a little uh, steel wool here. And they're too shiny. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, friends, that's all I have for you this week. Mm, I really love this piece, but I really don't like the hardware. That's not what I picked. I wanted a drop pole. It came with drop poles, but they were very ornate, but not in a cool way. <laughs> I didn't. They were heavy and ornate, and I... I thought about putting them back on, painting them black, and no, I really don't like it. And you know, as I look at this in the camera, it doesn't look too bad. I am going to change these. I think, I just feel like they're too industrial looking for what this piece is. I really enjoyed painting this piece. It was kind of freeing to blend the colors together. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got a sense of how to do that so that you can practice on your next piece. And when I say practice, I mean practice. Don't worry about making a mistake. You know, that's how you discover new things, by just getting in there diving in and trying something new. So I'm challenging you to try it on your next piece. So good luck on your next project, and I'll see you next time. You can do it. <laughs>watching my video you can find more videos just like this on my youtube channel and don't forget to subscribe